show you guys how I do my pantry milk. I think it's just more sustainable than, you know, having a whole jar of just cashew milk. Okay, so let's see what I have in my pantry. Some walnuts, sunflower seeds. Cashews are great. I like to throw a couple of these in just to add a little bit of creaminess and the cashews are also not the most sustainable nut. Better to go with more seeds if you're gonna make a lot of milk. Coconut flakes, they just add like a nice sweetness and nice like oh. fat. things in. They say you can soak it. They're pretty good without soaking it. And then we blend. All done. Wow. So the rest of this pulp, I'm going to lay it out on a baking sheet dry it out and tomorrow I'll use it to make granola. Pantry milk, guys. There's a store called, no, don't fall. It's the store in Highland Park called Tear. They have so much bulk stuff right now, which I know is extremely hard to get right now during the pandemic. You can't bring your own containers yet, but they do it in these recyclable bags. So I got some pink clay. So I think people just still, they still associate me with like a heavy beauty person. I'm really quite simple. Although I did go through my phase of like a maximalist skincare routine. But as I've gotten older, I just like don't need it as much. Back downstairs. I like to do any bit of movement in the morning, even if it's for 15, even if it's just five minutes. I'm just gonna do like five minutes of some yoga stretching, like a, a nice sun salutation. Okay, coffee. Better practices to find a more sustainable routine is to shop a lot of bulk. water, a little bit of essential oils, but mostly just rose. Good vibration. Let's get this off, shall we? Going in with my bamboo cloth. Kind of perfect for these masks when you don't want to ruin your white towels. I love a good face oil. It's not a lot of ingredients. That's how I like to start my mornings. So speaking of things that, you know, are a practice, you're constantly challenging. I actually haven't been that good at my oral care. I got an electric one because strangely enough, and I will show you guys, every time I brush my teeth or hear someone brushing their teeth, I get chills. Ooh. I'm gonna try a bamboo toothbrush for the first time. Also, Bird's Beast has this charcoal, charcoal toothpaste. Okay, are you ready to see my chills? This is no chills. <laughs> It's literally only when I'm brushing my teeth. I do not feel like I have a clean mouth unless I have one of these guys to scrape my tongues. And I have this one, it's a copper one, some floss with no packaging. I stand the whole toothbrush toothpaste situation. I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna take a shower. I kind of already did my face already, so I'm just gonna rinse off my body. <laughs> Need large soap. It's like one of those Korean uh, scrubby thingies. I'll throw it in here and then just use it as my little loofa. Maybe shampoo my hair like every three days, but you know, it's nice because it keeps my showers shorter. She got changed. She's 
a little cleaner. I have to have these bamboo reusable cotton rounds. And I love it because it comes in like this little laundry bag, which I clearly need to do my laundry. <laughs> like there's only a few that I've dedicated to like really, really heavy makeup wiping. Do you want to share with you guys? how I wax because this is like another good zero waste. Oh, okay, also gonna say that uh, bathroom cleaning is a thing. I got one of these like bamboo toilet scrubs which works amazing and I also have dedicated a loofah here to do any of my bathroom scrubbing so I kind of just scrub down my bathtub. Okay, we're back in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you guys how I make the wax. I'm not gonna go into full detail because um, there is a YouTube video on this that I constantly refer back to, but basically it's just sugar, water, and lemon. Okay, you want this on medium high and you wanna whisk it the entire time. Where you can do a hard wax where you don't need strips or you can do a soft wax with strips. So I just repurposed this old restaurant napkin I had laying around. As you can see, I really needed to wax. So we're gonna ah, run it down, tot it, yank it. Ah! We got contact. I can clean these by just rinsing it in hot water, getting all the sugar off and just throwing it in the wash. Oh my God, my whole leg is perfect. But she is gonna look real cute coming out of quarantine. So the last bit of like, a more sustainable routine has been, you know, menstrual cups, and I pair it along with Thinks, which is like a reusable underwear pad. So I've had these for over a year now. Gotta love the thongs. And my last sort of sustainable practice I've been adapting is getting rid of food waste. So in my previous place, I had a compost bin, but here I've been trying to figure out what to do with food waste. So I just got this Bokashi composting system. Easy, I've been saving all my food scraps, like the eggs I made, and I'm just dumping it into this little system with a little bit of fermented bran. I could probably do another video on this down the line, but I'm just starting out on it. So we'll see how it goes. And I definitely wanna to touch up really quick on a little bit more about sustainability and what it means to me. I had already recorded this previously, but I decided to scrap all that talking footage to sort of update my talking points. A lot of the stuff I brought up in this video are very wonderful habits to introduce into your life, but maybe on a little bit more of a superficial level. I think for me, sustainability is really keeping mindful of our relationship with capitalism, obviously making sure we're not buying more than we need, that we don't have to buy as much as we think we do. Yes, we're gonna buy things still, but like how do we sustain something that it evolves into the world we wanna live in? And also remember that outside of these practices, sustainability is also about the sustainability of human lives. There's so much systemic racism that I'm so glad we are all collectively talking about right now. And a lot of it goes to like our economic structures and trade laws, that sort of system that we're all forced to participate in and how we can challenge that. And I know there's so much to unbox and so much to learn and unlearn, but we have to make sure that not only are we holding each other accountable, but we hold space to forever learn and forever to dismantle brick by brick a system that's no longer working for us, a system that no longer serves us and how can we collectively rebuild that into a world we wanna be and see and live in. I think about that all the time. You know, that's why I started Ward because it's a culture that I believe in. While I don't have very many answers. I want to know that I am on a journey and a path and I'm waking up to problems that I really wanna find solutions for. So I really encourage you and myself that moving forward, we start to challenge all the touch points in our lives and understand where it really comes from because we having vulnerable communities being poorly affected is just something we can no longer turn a blind eye on. I also want you to know I stand in solidarity of Black Lives Matter in that I will actively change my ways to diversify the world and the industry that I'm in. And like many things I talk about on this channel, it is a practice and it's a mindfulness, and it's something that doesn't just go away, that you don't just research and learn and feel like you know it all in a month. And it's going to be an ongoing practice, just like what meditation is or what holding space is, but instead of the conversation about always holding space for ourselves, how do we hold space for others? That to me 
is sustainability. So that said, thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of my world. Thank you for holding me accountable and doing it with such grace and beauty. I really appreciate so many of you, all of you, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.